All right, so I gave this talk a few weeks ago for Voxel 51's Vision Summit, and I was able to co-present with a, a real expert on multimodal embedding models. I am not an expert. I am more of a user. The idea behind multimodal embedding models is that you can take unstructured data, and unstructured data is really the bulk of the data out there, or anything that's not a spreadsheet or a SQL database. So that means images or texts or videos. This unstructured data is transformed using an embedding model into a vector space. You can think of these embedding models as big f of x's, where x is your unstructured data input. F, the f of x is a transformer with multiple layers of neural networks. And the y equals f of x is going to be those trained final weights or vectors that come out of that model after it's been trained. By multimodal embedding model, what's going on here is that regardless of the original media type, these the vectors are all going to reside in the same vector space, which means that when you search this vector space using approximate nearest neighbor search on vectors, which is super fast, typically just a cosine calculation of distance between vectors, what's retrieved could be image or a video or even text. So for example, if you typed in King of the Jungle, you might retrieve another text similar to King of the Jungle, or you might retrieve an image of King of the Jungle. <laughs> now I just want to talk about some terminology that you might hear when people talk about multimodal models. They are named according to when the fusion happens in the training. So for example, late, mid, and early fusion models. Well, late fusion models were the earliest, uh, beginning with OpenAI Clip in 2021. You'd have a text transformer model and you'd also have an image transformer model. This is called two towers of transformers that are trained independently of each other with contrast of loss per tower. And once each model has been trained with the next to last layer of trained weights, then those trained weights are combined together into a single vector space after the fact of the training. Midfusion starts out similarly. You've got, if you've got just text and images, then you would have a separate text model and a separate image model that are trained again independently. But then what's different is you might have some holdout data that is used to now train a midfusion model. So this is now a united model over both text and images of that holdout data. And some examples of this architecture were, there was some early Google DeepMind in 2021, Salesforce Bloop and SFR, as well as some versions of trillion parameter models from Gemini and GPT-4V. The holy grail, things that we've only just recently started hearing about is early fusion. And this is where you have just one model that is trained together on all media types all at once without fusion after the fact. So fusion is happening while the model is being trained. Some examples of this, there was a from Meta image bind in 2023, and even just recently, a few weeks ago, Meta Chameleon 2024 was announced in this category. So today I'm going to be demoing Unum's U-Form encoders that sit on Hugging Faces, the website. And I'm gonna, I use this one called U-Form 3 Image Text Multilingual Base. What's exciting about this is embedding models are getting smaller. And this might be counterintuitive because you might think a larger dimensional vector means higher accuracy. But what we're learning is that, especially with OpenAI's release in February of 2024, the BGE large and small, that because they trained using something called Matryoshka representation learning, that you can have a smaller embedding dimension, such as 256 or 512, that actually has almost exactly the same accuracy as the larger 1536 or 1024 dimensional embedding vector. So that's one thing that, that came about recently is the MRL learning. And also quantization has made these embedding smaller. Smaller models means you can serve them with lower latency and you can also store them. I mentioned I showed the website for the encoder model on Hugging Face. In order to use it, you do need to pip install Uform. 
and there are three different flavors of it. It was originally trained in PyTorch, but for the lightest version available is Onyx. So that's the one I'm going to use because I do have a very small laptop. And the function that I'm using this compute embeddings show you what's going on here. So it's got an init where I um, instantiate the model. Uh, it's got two version, two parts to it, the text encoder and the image encoder. It is a late fusion model. Then I have a callable method here where I do the embeddings themselves. And depending on whether the input is, is an image or a text, then I call model in inference mode to encode either the image or the text. And then I need to normalize those embeddings, of course, in order to use cosine distance metric. I'm only going to be able to use batch size 10 of 10 images at a time. Looping through those, hopefully you'll get the idea with just 600 images. Uh, looping through 10 at a time, I go ahead and get either the text or the image. Here's the embedding model where I call it. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and put it into a dick list so that I can insert that data. So you, here's the two dense vectors along with the image path. And then because text is small, I'll just store the, the chunk of text and insert that and flush after the end of all of my batches. Here, after a little time delay, you can see that I have run this. It took about half an hour. I did a demo a while ago where I showed how to distribute uh, embedded training times using Ray Data or AnyScale. And this is actually the perfect kind of job for distributed compute because there's no, there's no state that needs to be saved between um, embedding inferences, uh, each one is an independent job. So this would have been perfect for me to distribute. Now that I have these vectors stored in my database, I think we are ready for the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> to search, I'm gonna ask a couple questions. For example, I can ask about um, brown leaves at daytime or maybe a cat. So here I'm gonna ask in French about uh, brown leaves you notice that there's three different ways I can query the database now. I can just ask using text only. And this is the first thing I'm going to do is just do a text, text image search only. And you can see that it understood my French query and we re returned images of brown leaves in the daytime. Now I could also search just images and this is called reverse image search. So now I'm ignoring the text, but I am going to search just the dense vector field for images. And let's say I chose a cat, like this cat on the left, to search and return images, and I should get other cats. Now I'm going to use both text and image. Here I'm just going to try out the multilingual capabilities of this model. Uh, the last choice I had here was Arabic, so I'm going to ask this question about Rocky Mountains at the golden hour, and I'm also going to give it a sample image so that I can do a true hybrid search of both text and image at the same time. And yeah, I should be getting uh, a little bit better. Now I think these are not so great. And I think it's just because I don't have enough images to get such, such great return results. Complete demo of RAG with the G part. I'll do a, a quick uh, generative generation using the images that I searched for. I'll use GPT-40. It's not a demo over GPT-40, but just to finish the full RAG circle. I'll go ahead and set some parameters, have my sample question in Arabic. I'm going to have my system prompt to write a short travel blog. Just for fun, I'm going to output it in Hindi and also ask for it to be in HTML so that I can have this as a web page. I've got my LLM name, which is GPT-40. I've got a fairly high temperature, so I'm letting it be creative. Yeah, it generated some HTML. So let me go ahead and copy this HTML and I will put it in my travel blog. Now I can go to my browser and see that indeed a blog was written in Hindi about the images that I searched for and the text. And I can even, I should be able to translate this to English. Yeah, tracking with my cat. So ta-da! the end of my demo.